Chapter 16 Digestion and Absorption Food is one of the basic requirements of all living organisms. The major components of our food are carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Vitamins and minerals are also required in small quantities. Food provides energy and organic materials for growth and repair of tissues. The water we take in plays an important role in metabolic processes and also prevents dehydration of the body. Biomacromolecules in the food cannot be utilized by our body in their original form. They have to be broken down and converted into simple substances in the digestive system. This process of conversion of complex food substances to simple absorbable forms is called digestion and is carried out by our digestive system by mechanical and biochemical methods general organization of human digestive system is shown in the figure 16.1 digestive system The human digestive system consists of alimentary canal and associated glands. Alimentary canal. The alimentary canal begins with an anterior opening, the mouth, and it opens out posteriorly through the anus. The mouth leads to the buccal cavity or oral cavity. The oral cavity has a number of teeth and a muscular tongue. Each tooth is embedded in a socket of jaw bone this type of attachment is called thecodont majority of mammals including human being forms two sets of teeth during their life a set of temporary milk or deciduous teeth replaced by a set of permanent or adult teeth this type of dentition is called diphyodont an adult human has 32 permanent teeth which are of four different types heterodont dentition namely incisors i canine c premolars pm and molars m arrangement of teeth in each half of the upper and the lower jaw in the order i c pm m is represented by a dentor formula which in human is 2123 upon 2123 the hard chewing surface of the teeth made up of enamel helps in mastication of food the tongue is a freely movable muscular organ attached to the floor of the oral cavity by the frenulum the upper surface of the tongue has small projections called papillae some of which bear taste buds The oral cavity leads into a short pharynx which serves as a common passage for food and air. The esophagus and the trachea that is windpipe open into the pharynx. A cartilaginous flap called epiglottis prevents the entry of the food into the glottis. Opening of the windpipe during swallowing. The esophagus is a thin long tube which extends posteriorly passing through the neck thorax and diaphragm and leads to a j shaped bag like structure called stomach a muscular sphincter gastroesophageal regulates the opening of esophagus into the stomach the stomach located in the upper left portion of the abdominal cavity has four major parts a cardiac portion into which the esophagus opens a fundic region body that is main central region and a pyloric portion which opens into the first part of a small intestine small intestine is distinguishable into three regions a c shaped duodenum a long coiled middle portion jejunum and a highly coiled ileum the opening of the stomach into the duodenum is guarded by the pyloric sphincter ileum 
opens into the large intestine it consists of cecum colon and rectum cecum is a small blind sac which host some symbiotic microorganisms a narrow finger like tubular projection the vermiform appendix which is a vestigial organ arises from the cecum the cecum opens into the colon the colon is divided into four parts an ascending a transverse descending part and a sigmoid colon the descending part opens into the rectum which open out through the anus the wall of the alimentary canal from esophagus to rectum possesses four layers namely serosa muscularis submucosa and mucosa serosa is the outermost layer and is made up of thin mesothelium epithelium of visceral organs with some connective tissue muscularis is formed by smooth muscles usually arranged into an inner circular and an outer longitudinal layer an oblique muscle layer may be present in some regions the submucosal layer is formed of loose connective tissue containing nerves blood and lymph vessels in duodenum glands are also present in submucosa the innermost layer lining the lumen of the alimentary canal is the mucosa this layer forms irregular folds rugae in the stomach and small finger like foldings called villi in the small intestine the cells lining the villi produce numerous microscopic projections called microvilli giving a brush border appearance these modification increase the surface area enormously villi are supplied with a network of capillaries and a large lymph vessel called the lacteal mucosal epithelium has goblet cells which secrete mucus that help in lubrication mucosa also form glands in the stomach gastric glands and crypts in between the bases of the villi in the intestine crypts of lubricant all the four layers show modification in different parts of the alimentary canal digestive glands the digestive glands associated with alimentary canal include the salivary glands the liver and the pancreas Saliva is mainly produced by three pairs of salivary glands the parotids cheek the submaxillary or submandibular lower jaw and the sublinguins below the tongue these glands situated just outside the buccal cavity secrete salivary juice into the buccal cavity liver is the largest gland of the body weighing about 1.2 to 1.5 kg in an adult human it is situated in the abdominal cavity just below the diaphragm and has two lobes the hepatic lobules are structural and functional units of liver containing hepatic cells arranged in the form of cords each lobule is covered by a thin connective tissue sheath called the glissens capsule the bile secreted by the hepatic cell passes through the hepatic ducts and is stored and concentrated in a thin muscular sac called the gall bladder the duct of the gall bladder cystic duct along with the hepatic duct form the liver forms the common bile duct the bile duct and the pancreatic duct open together into the duodenum as the common hepatopancreatic duct which is guarded by a sphincter called the sphincter of od the pancreas is a compound both exocrine and endocrine elongated organ situated between the limbs of the c shaped duodenum The exocrine portion secretes an alkaline pancreatic juice containing enzymes and the endocrine portion secretes hormone insulin and glucagon. Digestion of food. 
the process of digestion is accomplished by mechanical and chemical processes the buccal cavity performs two major functions mastication of food and facilitation of swallowing the teeth and the tongue with the help of the saliva masticate and mix up the food thoroughly mucus and saliva helps in lubricating and adhering the masticated food particles into a bolus the bolus is then conveyed into the thin pharynx into the pharynx and then into the esophagus by swallowing or deglutition the bolus further passes down through the esophagus by a successive waves of muscular contraction called peristalsis the gastroesophageal sphincter controls the passage of the food into the stomach the saliva secreted into the oral cavity contains electrolytes na plus k plus cl minus hco3 minus and enzymes salivary amylase and lysozyme the chemical process of digestion is initiated in the oral cavity by the hydrolytic action of the carbohydrate splitting enzyme the salivary amylase about 30% of the starch is hydrolyzed here by this enzyme optimum ph 6.8 into a disaccharide maltose lysozyme present in the saliva act as an antibacterial agent that prevents infection starch in the presence of salivary amylase ph should be 6.8 will give maltose the mucosa of the stomach has gastric glands gastric glands have three major types of cells namely one mucus neck cells which secrete mucus second peptic or chief cells which secrete the proenzyme pepsinogen and third parietal or auxentic cell which secrete hcl an intrinsic factor factor essential for absorption of vitamin b12 the stomach stores the food for 4 5 hours the food mixes thoroughly with the acidic gastric juice of the stomach by the churning movements of its muscular wall and is called the chyme the proenzyme pepsinogen on exposure to hydrochloric acid gets converted into the active enzyme pepsin the proteolytic enzyme of the stomach pepsin converts protein into proteases and peptones that is peptides the mucus and bicarbonates present in the gastric juice play an important role in lubrication and protection of mucosal epithelium from exocriation by the highly concentrated hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid provides the acidic ph 1.8 optimal for pepsins renin is a proteolytic enzyme found in gastric juice of infants which help in digestion of milk proteins small amounts of lipases are also secreted by gastric glands various types of movements are generated by the muscularis layer of the small intestine these movements help in a thorough mixing up of the food with various secretions in the intestine and thereby facilitate digestion the bile pancreatic juice and the intestinal juice are the secretion released into the small intestine pancreatic juice and bile are released through the hepatopancreatic duct the pancreatic juice contains inactive enzymes trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen procarboxypeptidases amylases lipases and nucleases Trypsinogen is activated by an enzyme enterokinase secreted by intestinal mucosa into active trypsin which in turn activates the other enzyme in the pancreatic juice the bile released in the duodenum contains bile pigments bilirubin and biliverdin bile salts cholesterol and phospholipids but no enzyme bile helps in emulsification of fats that is breaking down of fats into very small micelles bile also activate lipases the intestinal mucosal epithelium has goblet cells which secretes mucus 
the secretion of the brush border cells of the mucosa along with the secretion of the goblet cells constitute the intestinal juice or succus entericus this juice contain a variety of enzymes like disaccharides example maltase dipeptidases lipases nucleosidases etc the mucus along with the bicarbonates from the pancreas protect the intestinal mucosa from acid as well as provide an alkaline medium ph 7.8 for enzymatic activities submucosal glands that is bruner's gland also help in this proteins proteases and peptones partially hydrolyzed proteins in the chyme reaching the intestine are acted upon proteolytic enzymes of pancreatic juice as given below the reaction given below is proteins plus peptones plus proteases all together in the presence of trypsin or chymotrypsin in the presence of carboxypeptidase gives dipeptides carbohydrates in the chyme are hydrolyzed hydrolyzed by pancreatic amylase into disaccharides the equation given is polysaccharides that is starch in the presence of amylase gives disaccharides fats are broken down by the lipases with the help of bile into di and monoglycerides the equation is fat in the presence of lipases gives diglycerides which further gets converted into monoglycerides nucleases in the pancreatic juice acts on the nucleic acid to form nucleotides and nucleosides the equation given is nucleic acids in the presence of nucleases gives nucleotides which further forms nucleosides the enzymes in the circus entericus acts on the end products of the above reaction to form the respective simple absorbable forms these final steps in digestion occur very close to the mucosal epithelial cells of the intestine dipeptides the in the presence of dipeptidases gives amino acids maltose in the presence of maltase give glucose plus glucose lactose in the presence of lactase give glucose plus galactose sucrose in the presence of sucrase gives glucose plus fructose nucleotides in the presence of nucleo uh, nucleotidases gives nucleosides which further in the presence of nucleosidases gives sugar plus bases di and monoglycerides in the presence of lipases gives fatty acid plus glycerol the breakdown of bio macromolecules mentioned above occurs in the duodenum region of the small intestine the simple substances thus formed are absorbed in the jejunum and ileum regions of the small intestine the undigested and unabsorbed substances are passed on to the large intestine no significant digestive activity occurs in the large intestine the functions of large intestine are first one is absorption of wa some water minerals and certain drugs uh, second is secretion of mucus which helps in adhering the waste particles together and lubricating it for an easy passage the undigested unabsorbed substances called feces enter into the cecum of the large intestine through ileocecal valve which prevents the backflow of the fecal matter it is temporarily stored in the rectum till defecation the activities of the gastrointestinal tract are under neural and hormonal control for proper coordination of different parts the sight smell and or the presence of food in the oral cavity can stimulate the secretion of saliva gastric and intestinal secretion are also similarly stimulated by the neural signals the muscular activities of different parts of the alimentary canal can also be moderated moderated by neural mechanism both local and through cns hormonal control of the secretion of the digestive juices is carried out by the local hormones produced by the gastric and intestinal mucosa calorific value of protein carbohydrate and fat boxed item is not for evolution 
the energy requirements of animals and the energy content of food are expressed in the terms of measure of heat energy because heat is the ultimate form of all energies this is often measured to as calorie or joule which is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of 1 g of water by 1 degree celsius since this value is tiny amount of energy physiologists commonly use kilocalorie that is kcal or kilojoule that is kj 1 kilocalorie is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kg of water by 1 degree celsius nutritionist uh, nutrish Nutritionist traditionally refer to uh, kilocalorie as the calorie or the joule always capitalized. The amount of heat liberated from the complete combustion of one gram food in bomb calorie meter, a closed metal chamber filled with O2, it is its gross calorific or gross energy value. The actual amount of the energy combustion of one gram of food is the physiologic value of the food. gross calorific values of carbohydrates proteins and fats are 4.1 kilocalorie 5.65 kilocalorie per gram and 9.45 kilocalorie per gram respectively whereas the physiologic values are 4.0 kilocalorie per gram 4.0 kilocalorie per gram and 9.0 kilocalorie per gram respectively absorption of digested products absorption is the process by which the end products of digestion pass through the intestinal mucosa into the blood or the lymph it is carried out by the passive active or facilitated transport mechanism small amounts of monosaccharides like glucose amino acid and some electrolytes like chloride ions are generally absorbed by simple diffusion the passage of these substances into the blood depends upon the concentration gradients however some substances like glucose and amino acid are absorbed with the help of carrier protein this mechanism is called facilitated transport transport of water depends upon the osmotic gradient active transport occur against the concentration gradient and hence requires energy various nutrients like amino acid monosaccharides like glucose electrolytes like na plus are absorbed in the blood by this mechanism fatty acid and glycerol being insoluble cannot be absorbed into the blood they are first incorporated into small droplets called micelles which move into the intestinal mucosa they are reformed into a very small protein coated fat globules called the chylomicrons which are transported into the lymph vessels lacteals in the villi these lymph vessels ultimately release the absorbed substances into the blood stream absorption of substances takes place in different parts of the alimentary canal like mouth stomach small intestine and large intestine however maximum absorptions occurs in the small intestine a summary of absorption site of absorption and substances absorbed is given in the table 16.1 mouth certain drugs coming in contact with mucosa of mouth and lower side of the tongue are absorbed in the blood capillaries lining them stomach absorption of water simple sugars and alcohol etc takes place small intestine principal organ for absorption of nutrients the digestion is completed here and the final products of digestion such as glucose fructose fatty acid glycerol and amino acid are absorbed through the mucosa into the blood stream and the lymph large intestine absorption of water some minerals and drugs takes place the absorbed substances finally reach the tissue which utilize them for their activity this process is called as assimilation the digestive wastes solidified into a coherent feces in the rectum initiate a neural flex causing an urge or desire for its removal 
the ejection of feces to the outside uh, through the anal opening that is defecation is a voluntary process and is carried out by a mass peristaltic movement disorders of digestive system the inflammation of the intestinal tract is the most common ailment due to bacterial or viral infections the infections are also caused by parasites of the intestine like tapeworm roundworm threadworm hookworm pinworm etc jaundice the liver is affected uh, skin and eyes turn yellow due to the deposit of bile pigments vomiting it is the ejection of stomach contents through the mouth this reflex action is controlled by the vomit center in the medulla a feeling of nausea precedes vomiting diarrhea the abnormal frequency of bowel movement and increased liquidity of the fecal discharge is known as diarrhea it reduces the absorption of food constipation in constipation the feces are retained within the colon as the bowel movements occur irregularly indigestion in this condition the food is not properly digested leading to a feeling of fullness the causes of indigestion are inadequate enzyme secretion anxiety food poisoning overeating and spicy food pem that is protein energy malnutrition a dietary deficiency of proteins and total food calories are widespread in many underdeveloped countries of south and southeast asia uh south america and west and central africa protein energy malnutrition that is pem may affect large sections of the population during drought famine and political turmoil this happened in bangladesh during the liberation war and in ethiopia during the severe drought in the mid mid 80s pem affects infants and children to produce marasmus and kwashiorkor disease Marasmus is produced by a simultaneous deficiency of proteins and calories. It is found in infants less than a year in age. If mother's milk is replaced too early by other foods which are poor in both proteins and caloric value. This often happens if the mother has second pregnancy or childbirth when the older infant is still too young. in marasmus protein deficiency impairs growth and replacement of tissue proteins extreme emaciation of the body and thinning of limbs results the skin becomes dry thin and wrinkled growth rate and body weight decline considerably even growth and development of brain and mental faculties are impaired kwashiorkor is produced by protein deficiency unaccompanied by caloric calorie deficiency it results from the replacement of mother's milk by a high calorie but low protein diet in a child more more than 1 year in a age like marasmus kwashiorkor shows wasting of muscles thinning of limbs failure of growth and brain development but unlike marasma some fat is still left under the skin moreover extensive edema and swelling of the body parts are seen thank you